thank you for joining us for 2021 California Biodiversity Days. My name is Shay Van Kieran, and I'm an environmental scientist with California State Parks. And I'm Cassie Cordoni, and I'm an environmental services intern for California State Parks. And we're at the Sac River, actually we're in the river at Bidwell Sacramento River State Park today. We will be conducting an aquatic bioassessment here. This means we'll be taking samples from the Sacramento River and looking at the aquatic macroinvertebrates that live here. They are a really good indicator of water quality. They are important to sustain a lot of life right here, from the birds we see, all the tadpoles and frogs that will live here, and you can do this at your home too. We can show you some of the equipment you will need to have your own aquatic bioassessment. So this table has all of our equipment we will need to do the aquatic bioassessment. To start, we have our collection pans. We made these very easily with paint liners and a turkey pan to help stabilize it. You can see the caddis fly we've already caught moving around. We've included these rocks in here to add some shade and shelter for the insects we collect. From here, we'll be putting them into this sorting tray. Our sorting tray is clear, so we've put it on a white piece of paper just so we can see them better once they're in here. You can also use an ice cube tray. To move them from the trays to the sorting area, we have tweezers and we have an eyedropper to help move the smaller guys. We have a magnifying glass to get a better look at them. And we also have this net to help scoop some up. Once they're in the sorting tray, by looks, we can identify them further using this macroinvertebrate identification chart. And macroinvertebrate is just a fancy name for water bugs. <laughs> you can find this chart below the video in a PDF. So you can use it for your own aquatic assessments at home. Along with the identification chart is a data sheet. This is what we'll use to estimate our water quality based on the bugs we find. Our last piece of equipment, and probably the most important, is our dip net. We made this, and you can make one at home as well, with the help of a parent or adult. It's just two wooden dowels and some lightweight canvas. So, Cassie, should we start sampling? Let's go. So we have found a really good sample site. We're standing in a riffle. A riffle is a part of a river that's shallow and fast moving. This is where we find our best sample of aquatic insects. So you start with your pick net and you stabilize it in the rock and then angle it down just like this. And then I'll start kicking the rocks up, ruffling up the soil, and we'll see what we get. going to grab some rocks and try to clean them off just to see if we can get anything else. All right, let's see. All right. What is that over there? I see movement. Let's take it back to our collection trays and see what we got. We are gonna look for anything that's moving. Here's this guy. We'll gently peel him off. He does not wanna go into our collection. One. See anything else moving? I'm not sure what this is. We'll put it in the water. Here's a little guy up here. And, ooh, I think that's a flatworm. Anything else moving? What's this? Oh, 
Is that something back there? Oh, nice eye, Cassie. Perfect. Gently pick him up. I don't see anything else moving. Cool. That was really good. That was great. So after three samplings, these are the insects we found in the riffle. And it is a pretty good variety of bugs. In this tray, we took some samples from some stiller water that was near the riffles, but not as good of quality. You can see the difference in insects we have here in gastropods. These are snails. So now we are going to take them out of the sampling trays and sort them by looks in our sorting tray. So you can see that we have found some really good stuff. We've cataloged them, we've sorted them by looks, and now we can go over them. So over here in this corner, we have case-making caddisflies. You can kind of see them hiding out inside their cases. And over here, this is a different type of caddisfly. They're free-floating. These ones, and here are all these little guys, these are stonefly nymphs. In this corner, we have mayfly nymphs. In this section, we have water boatmen. And here, we have one single midge. In this larger area, we have found a bunch of flatworms, also known as planaria. In this section, we have found only a few tube effects worms. And over here are our pouch snails that really like to escape. Now we'll use our data sheet to see what species we've collected. Perfect. To do that, we will see if we can find them on our identification chart. And we can, most of them anyway. To start, we have found all three of these top ones, which are really important indicators of good water quality, as they're fairly sensitive species. We have mayflies, stoneflies, and caddisflies. This is what they look like in the water as aquatic insects, and this is what we see them as when they're adults. They have wings when they're adults, and they emerge from the water and become their winged adult form. This is very similar to cicadas, but cicadas live underground and then they emerge and hatch to be their winged adult stage. We also found one midge. Thank you for recording our data, Cassie. No problem. And if we flip our chart around, it's a two page chart. We also found some of these things, such as pouch snails. Okay. Pouch snails are really cool because they are indicators of, of not the best water quality. So it's interesting to find them here with the ones that are more sensitive. Pouch snails can, can survive in these poorer areas because they come to the surface and they'll get oxygen, store it in a pouch inside their snail shell, and then go back down to the bottom of the water. So if the water is not very good, it doesn't matter because they get air from, they get oxygen from the air, not the water. We also found things that are not on this chart, but, oh, worms. We also found some tube effects worms. You can check those off. The things we found that aren't included are the water boatmen and the, the flatworms, the planaria. So it's really exciting to find more species than we can even identify. This is a really good diversity of aquatic insects, and they are very exciting finds. Now we can calculate all of our check marks to see what our data sheet says about our water quality. While Cassie does the calculations, I can talk a little bit more about some of these cool features. So the, uh, the flatworms, the planaria, are so easy to find anywhere in, in uh, water systems. And they have eye spots, but not real eyes. And you can also cut them in half and they'll regenerate as two planaria. So Cassie, what is our score? Well, I totaled up these and did the equation and we have our score is 16, which means it's potentially fair water quality. I'm pretty satisfied with that because when we usually do our aquatic assessments is in the springtime when we have a lot more insects to choose from 
at this time of year, most of them have emerged to be their winged adult selves. So for this time of year and the amount and different ones we found, I think that's a good score. Yeah, me too. We found some really good stuff today and I am very happy with how this went. Doing aquatic assessments in our own backyard really helps us appreciate the biodiversity right here in our water. And you can do them too and learn more about the diversity in your waterways. Take your parent out next time you're at the river or the lake and see what you can find under the rocks. Last thing I would like to do though is return them to their home. Thank you guys so much for being with us today on the banks of the Sacramento River. And you know Shay, something's really bugging me. Let's go get some more. Sounds good.